Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the history of the internet. I feel it's important to kind of know about where the internet has come from, what's happened along the way, so that you have some basic language by which we can then discuss uh, digital marketing in its current context. And we're going to specifically end today with talking over this set of videos of talking a lot about the history and the future of social media in this space. And so I think that kind of gives you some insight into how digital marketing is changing. So if we look back, the internet actually goes back to what was called the ARPANET, which was a military program to kind of connect together a bunch of advanced research projects out there that were going on, right? Uh, and that was first established in 1969 in its, in its modern, well, in the, that format, in the format that wound up developing into the, the internet eventually. And in fact, in 1973, the first email standard was developed, which looks very, that looks similar to today's email format. There were some emails before that, but the, the basically the same email standard that we use today was originally established in 1973. In 1982, ARPANET was moved away from its, uh, the framework that had been used before to a new framework known as TCP IP, or Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol, which were then established. This is essentially, in many ways, the birth of the modern internet that we know about. That TCP IP framework is still the framework that all of the communications that happen around the internet happen today, right? Um, 1991, about nine years later, Tim Berners-Lee develops web technology, the World Wide Web, the thing that we probably interact with the most often on uh, the internet to a large extent uh, nowadays. And in 1993, CERN decides to make the technology that Tim Berners-Lee had developed free for everyone. And that, that really was a fundamental um, major point in the history of, I would say, in some respects, the modern world, right? Because if CERN had decided to license that technology instead of making it freely available to everyone, we would be sitting in what some people refer to as a bunch of walled gardens, right? Everyone have their little domain of the internet. Instead, anyone who has can pay for an internet connection can essentially put up a website and make the content of that website available to everyone without paying any additional fees than the bandwidth it takes to transmit that content back and forth, right? That's, that's a really fundamentally important notion about how the internet developed. Without that, I don't think we would have seen the development of nearly as many interesting technologies that we've seen right now. In fact, one of those is that in 1995, Amazon.com is launched. It doesn't look anything like what it does today, uh, but it is launched and essentially is a major bookseller at the time, as many of you know. Um, oh, it wasn't even a major bookseller. It becomes a major bookseller from that. Uh, Internet Explorer is also introduced, which um, was an interesting development. Microsoft for a long time actually was not supportive of web technologies, but eventually did adopt it. In 1997, the word search engine optimization is first defined, right? Uh, and we start to think about how can we actually build our websites so that people can easily find them. And it isn't until 1998 that Google is launched by Sergey Brin and Larry Page. And in fact, Google solves a lot of problems. Before Google's existence, um, the easiest way to find something on the web was to go to a hierarchical set of pages, something like Yahoo maintained and still maintains, that would list under like, you know, I'd have to look down and find, I want a uh, electronic sales firm that specializes in custom audio and kind of, rather than just typing in one word and getting a result out of it, right? Um, and then 2001, Wikipedia is launched and the first dot-com bubble collapses. So there are a bunch of things that no longer exist, like Webvan, right, which were these uh, eToys.com, right? All these different dot-coms that kind of got a lot of money because everyone wanted to invest in a new internet startup. And those people started to realize that most of those weren't going to actually be profitable businesses and the dot-coms started to collapse, right, the first dot-com era. Now, after uh, 2002, right, so let's take a little bit of a turn, we have 2004, we have Amazon turns its first profit and Facebook launches, right? So Amazon finally proves in many respects that it is a, you can make money on the internet, right? This is, you know, roughly, you know, several years post uh, the end of the first dot-com bubble, which is kind of interesting. There's all this hype around it, and yet it's not till later that actually Amazon shows the profitability of the internet. In 2005, YouTube launches and more users go online. In other words, more users are actively using the internet than did in the entire early 1990s. So at that point, 17 million users. 
a small number compared to today, but still impressive. In 2006, Google buys up YouTube. Facebook opens up beyond campuses. Facebook was initially limited to just uh, universities, in fact, just a select few universities. And at this time, people are already starting to increase in terms of their content creation. A blog is created every second. Time Magazine names you as the person here because we were creating all this great content that goes out on the web. Twitter launches, right? Um, and things just start to spill upwards, right? There's more and more content being created. 2007, Gmail and the iPhone launch, uh, creating new platforms for people to interact on. 2009, Facebook adds the like feature. That's right, the like button was not there initially, and Foursquare launches. Um, in 2010, iPad and Pinterest launch. And so we're starting to see this accumulation of more devices, more technology, more social media ways of interacting with the world, right? In 2011, internet usage tops 2 billion people worldwide. YouTube reaches 1 trillion total views and 1 billion tweets per week are sent, right? Five years after the launch of Twitter. In 2012, Facebook dot, uh, jumps over 1 billion users in the world and online ad spends finally exceeds print ad spend for the first time. In 2013, Vine launches, then closes down in 2016, as many of you might know. 100 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute, and there are 45 billion app downloads happening from the App Store in 2013. 2016, last year, bringing us up to the current date, Vine closes down, well actually closing down in 2017, but now it's closed down in 2016. Internet usage tops 3.5 billion users worldwide, right? So um, we're getting up almost to half of the, of the worldwide population uh, is now has access to the internet, right? Apple's App Store has 2 million apps on it, giving you lots and lots of choices. 300 hours of YouTube video are now uploaded every minute. Facebook has 1.79 billion monthly active users who click like 4.5 billion times per day. Not that each one of the users clicks 4.5 billion, but on aggregate they do, right? So that kind of gives you some ex idea of, of how we've really kind of gone off, right? Like we've kind of started and sped up and things have just keep accumulating, accumulating. There is more content being posted to YouTube, for instance, right now than you could possibly ever watch in a lifetime, right? Um, and it's quickly becoming the fact that that uh, is happening more and more on each of these different platforms. And just to give you some idea, as a result of this, things keep changing. So this is the McDonald's website uh, before 2002, actually going back to 1996, and uh, afterwards. So 1996, uh, 2002, I think this is a 2008 screenshot, and then last year, 2016, right? And you can see how trends in our use of the web is developing and changing over time. The original use of the web was very cartoonish in many ways, right? Very simple. Graphics were expensive to transmit, right? Things were difficult to get across. So you wanted to keep your website simple and easy to understand and use, right? Even by 2002, we had gotten um, more advanced content, more advanced uh, interactions, things going on with uh, what's going happening there. There seems to be more emphasis now on actual products and content goes to almost a sales medium, right? And as you can see, what's interesting is we kind of went through a phase where things got more complex and then got more simpler. So if you look at the most recent picture, right, we moved down to just a kind of simple graphic with a simple image of what's happening. Um, content uh, providers also had a similar thing. NBC.com starts out as a very kind of, here's what's happening, here's what's going on on our website, right? Um, or on our channel, right? Uh, and then you can see as we move forward, we get more insight into what uh, other things are going on, other kinds of uh, content, exploring online video, right? Even earlier on, adding more online video, things like that. There, there was also some interest in doing more advertising. So there's a Kodak ad here that has nothing to do necessarily with NBC itself, 
just advertising to further support and complement uh, the actual website. And that continues, even today, there's a little bit of an ad going on from Adobe uh, on the NBC website, right? Um, many people originally did ads because they thought that the website would never be able to pay for itself, that the content and the interest of it was not sufficient in order for it to be useful as a medium itself, so the ads were a way to subsidize the creation of the website. Again, you see a development of getting a little busier and then simplifying in recent years, partially because this content is also dynamic. It'll change as uh, you continue to look at the content of the website, right? Online commerce also changes over time, right? The original Brookstone, web, well, not the original, but one of the early Brookstone websites, right? Just a bunch of links to a bunch of different categories, right? And then we start adding pictures and we start concentrating on pictures. And then we start showing more detail. And this one actually is kind of interesting. It almost seems like a combination of some of the newer ideas of simpler design, plus the ability to click instantly on whatever you want, right? 